It is now time for question period. The member from Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Premier, you included the following in your mandate letter to the Minister of Health, and I quote, continue the pursuit of affordable drug access for patients. This will include a coordinated process for approving new and expensive drugs to minimize the wait for people who need these life-saving medications. Premier, notwithstanding the minister's last-minute half-baked announcement this morning, why are you allowing to fail in this mandate? Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. Wow. Well, uh, yes for an Mr. Speaker, like yes for an I'm not sure if uh, patients and families of patients that are suffering from atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome, AHUS, would agree with the member opposite that it was a half-baked announcement this morning, not by myself, Mr. Speaker, but uh, several days ago, the executive officer of the Ontario Public drug program, because this is not a political decision. This yeah. is a decision made by clinical experts and bureaucrats searching it. through the best there. and most reliable information available. So several days ago, I was informed that the executive officer will now provide Solaris to patients with atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome or AHUS who meet yes, the fine clinical criteria yeah, of the news. disease. That's Thank you. Very good news. Supplementary. Again, back to the Premier. We're joined by Michael Igram, Joshua Di Bartoli, and other patients suffering from AHUS who've been waiting for two years for Solaris, the only medication that can actually help them. And I, I would note that how convenient is it that the announcement Order. was made today? I guess it takes a little bit of the heat off you, but I think people need to know that this is not going to be funded for all AHOS patients. It's only a one-off strategy. Only those who are really, really sick are going to be able to get access to this. Not everybody who needs it. And I think that's important for the people of Ontario and the patients who are here in good faith to know that. So my question to you, Premier, is given the fact that 40 other countries have approved this, it's been approved in the province of Quebec, the clinical evidence is there that can actually extend lives and save people, will you commit to permanent Question. funding for Solaris for these patients today? Thank you. Minister? Anti-science. Well, um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, quite frankly, I don't think the people of Ontario want to take the word of the member opposite in terms of the science and clinical evidence behind this uh, decision. Quite frankly, they shouldn't take my word either, even though I'm a practicing physician and a public health specialist. But they should take the word, the combined evidence that was provided by our office, not my political office, by the Office of Ontario Public Drug Program when they consulted with advocacy groups, when they consulted with other jurisdictions around the world, including Australia and England, when they consulted in the very physicians and specialists that are providing support to these individuals with AHUS. Their combined decision on clinical evidence and science was to provide this solution to those that meet the clinical eligible criteria Answer. for this disease to provide them with the Solaris treatment that they have asked for. Right. Thank you. Final supplementary. Mr. Speaker, I would suggest that the Minister of Health is trying to have it both ways. He's saying he's going to fund Solaris, but then there's not clinical evidence in some cases to allow it. So I'm not really sure what he's planning on saying here. But the fact of the matter is that time after time after time, patients that are facing these devastating diseases have to come to Queen's Park to advocate and put the pressure on you and get media attention in order to get access to the drugs that they really need to save their lives. This has to stop. Will you commit today Order. permanent funding for Solaris for the patients that need it? Thank you. Minister. Well, you know, Mr. Speaker, I, I truly believe in the member opposite, in her heart of hearts, I actually do believe that she supports a process which is apolitical, yeah. which reaches out to the exact specialists and clinical experts and scientists that know more than you and I will ever know about this condition, that reaches out to the advocates of this illness, the patients, their families, that looks around the world at other jurisdictions that have also resolved this challenging question. And in her heart of hearts, I believe that she supports the decision that these political experts and these bureaucrats and officials have made.
New Order. question. Jim Wilson. The leader, uh, the, the, the uh, member from Whitby, Oshawa. When you replaced Dalton McGuinty, you promised to do things differently and turn the page on a decade of Liberal scandals. But less than a year into the job, same old, same old. Let there be no mistake. Your failure to remove Pat Cervera from her job, even temporarily, means that you have chosen to make this scandal worse and erode the integrity reposed in your office. Premier, I remember that Premier McGuinty kept senior staff in his office while they were. Thank you. I will have order. And the Minister of Education come to order. Please finish. Premier, I remind you that Premier McGuinty kept senior staff in his office even under criminal investigation, and that resulted in deleted emails and destroyed evidence. Don't make the same mistake. Show Ontarians the integrity that the Deputy Premier says that you have. Restore confidence in your leadership and show Pat Sorbera the Question. Speaker, and I, uh, I know that the member opposite knows that I have uh, taken and do take this matter very seriously. Uh, Elections Ontario has determined that the allegations against me and the member for Sudbury uh, were baseless, Mr. Speaker. We'll continue to cooperate fully with the investigation, Mr. Speaker. We will continue to do that. The chief Order. electoral officer, as the member opposite knows, the chief electoral officer has clearly stated, and I quote: "Member for the I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges. So the investigations are entirely independent, Mr. Speaker. The Public Prosecution Service of uh, Canada has been retained, and Mr. Speaker, I really believe that we need to let." the investigation uh, run its course, Mr. Speaker. That's what we need to do. Thank you. Supplementary. Out of your hands. There's still a lot that you can do. Why don't you restore some semblance of integrity into your office? Try and protect the integrity of your office, Deputy House Leader, come to order. the integrity of the police investigation, the integrity of the Sudbury Police Board, the integrity of our electoral system, and the integrity that Ontarians place in their elected officials. You can start doing this by directing the Secretary of Cabinet to seize Ms. Sorbera's computer, preserve all of her emails and her telephone records, and anything else that may lend itself to a police investigation. Will you at least direct the Secretary of Cabinet to do that? First of all, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Let me address the issue. Sorry. I was using my <laughs> silent stare. I'm just not sure whether to sit or stand. Okay, um, Mr. Speaker, first let me address the issues arising out of recommendations that came to us uh, through the Information Privacy Commissioner over the last uh, year or so. Mr. Speaker, we have made many changes in my office and across government. We have put training in place in terms of retention of documents. So those, those procedures are already in place, Mr. Speaker. So I, I can reassure the member opposite that those pr procedures have changed. They are in place. The training has been done. Uh, on the second issue, Issue, Mr. Speaker, I really believe that in order for the investigation to be able to continue, as the member knows, it is an independent process. The best thing that we can do is to let it unfold, Mr. Speaker. That actually, that actually preserves the integrity of the, of the process and of the investigation. So we're going to let it unfold as it uh, as it must, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Final supplementary. Mr. Speaker, notwithstanding the so-called procedures that have been put in place, there is a pattern of Liberal staffers destroying evidence here. So I want to ask the Premier what steps she's taken to limit Pat Sorbera's access to the levers of power. Have you stripped her of any authority? Have you ordered anyone to preserve her telephone records? Have you ordered the hard drives and computers be turned over to the OPP so they don't get wiped like they did in the gas plant scandal? And as leader of the Liberal Party, have you ordered party officials to preserve any evidence at Liberal Party headquarters as far as Pat Sorbera and Jerry Lahid are involved? Please, Premier, tell us at least you're doing something. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Premier. 
I've answered uh, these questions over and over again. I made a statement last Friday that made it, ex it clear what my position is, Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, we need to let the independent investigation unfold as it will, Mr. Speaker. And there are a lot of issues that we could be talking about, Mr. Speaker. Order. Many of our members have been at uh, the Roma OGRA conference, Mr. Speaker. There are a lot of issues that we could be talking about. In fact, the member opposite could be asking about uh, the, our announcement this morning to provide funding to build and repair critical infrastructure for small, rural, and northern municipalities, Mr. Speaker. The member opposite could be asking about the need for continued action across Canada to invest in public infrastructure. That's a crying need, Mr. Speaker. The member opposite could be asking about the roundtable tomorrow on missing and murdered Aboriginal women that a number of uh, my members and I will be attending, Mr. Speaker. She could be asking about that. Those are very, very be seated. Be seated, please. New question. The leader of the third party. Thank you, Pauline Gay. Thank you. Right. Stop the clock. The leader of the third party. New question. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Yesterday, the Deputy Premier complained that the opposition continues to insist that the Premier answer some very important questions. So sorry to disappoint the Deputy Premier, Speaker, but we're going to continue to do just that. And so my question is, who told Pat Sorbara to offer Andrew Olivier a job? Speaker, again, I have, uh, I have, and I do take this matter very, very seriously. I have answered dozens of questions, tens of questions in this house, Mr. Yep. Speaker. I will continue to answer those questions. I made a statement last Friday, making it clear what my position is, Mr. Speaker. The elections Ontario uh, has determined. Elections Ontario has determined that the allegations against me and the member for Sudbury were baseless, Mr. Speaker. We'll continue to cooperate fully with the independent investigation, Mr. Speaker, and the Chief Electoral Officer has stated, I'm neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges. These investigations are entirely independent, Mr. Speaker, and I believe that to preserve the integrity of the investigation, we need to let it unfold. It doesn't matter, Mr. Speaker, answer. how many times I am asked the question. I have answered, I will continue to answer, and I have just given the answer that I will continue to repeat. Well, Speaker, what does matter is to who told Jerry Lougheed to offer Andrew Olivier a job. Perhaps she can answer that question, Speaker. Thank you. Again, Mr. Speaker, the investigation is not being conducted in this legislature. I have answered questions. I have made it very clear uh, my position, Mr. Speaker. I've made it clear that I believe the investigation is separate, that it, the integrity of the investigation needs to be maintained, and we do that by, uh, by allowing it to be independent. So I take this matter very seriously. Mr. Speaker, I have, answered, uh, I have answered questions. We will continue to cooperate fully with the investigation. And, Mr. Speaker, I hope that the, uh, the members opposite will do this. Order. The member from Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke will come to order. Thank you. Uh, final supplement. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, the matter of who gave Pat Cerbera and Jerry Lougheed the instructions to offer that job is an extremely, extremely serious question, Speaker. But the Premier has ducked that very question 24 Order. times in this chamber. Stop the clock. I, uh, I ask again, calmly, please, decorum. Let the question be put. Let the answer be answered. Please finish. 24 times, Speaker. That question's been asked and not answered, and the Deputy Premier can actually take note of that as she scores up the questions. When the Premier refuses to answer, Better Speaker, the environment it isn't just order. that she's showing a lack of respect uh, for me or the people in this chamber. She's showing a lack of respect for the people of Ontario. Because these answers, Speaker, 
These answers are not just for me, and they're not just for us. This isn't a silly game. The answers are for the people of this province, and they deserve those answers. So once again, Question. number 25, Speaker, I'm going to ask the Premier, who told Jerry Lahey and Pat Sorbera to offer a job to Mr. Olivier so he wouldn't Thank run you. for the nomination in Sudbury? Thank you. Premier. Speaker, because I fundamentally challenge the premise of the question, I say to the member opposite, I have answered those questions. I have made a clear statement of what happened in the Sudbury by-election, why we chose, why I chose for uh, Glenn Kibo to be the candidate, Mr. Great Speaker. Decision. I made that decision, Mr. Speaker. There is an investigation going on. That investigation is independent. We need to let that investigation unfold, Mr. Yeah. Speaker, and that's what we're going to do. Thank you very much, Speaker. My next question is also for the Premier. According to Elections Ontario and the OPP, there is evidence that Andrew Olivier was offered a job, offered a bribe. Pat Cerbera and Jerry Lougheed are on tape, and those tapes say Order. they were acting on behalf of this— Stop the clock. From all sides, from time to time. In fairness to the questioner, um, I don't like interrupting, but I must when there's not enough to be heard. I apologize. Carry on. Thank you, Speaker. Just to recap, the evidence shows that the OPP has the evidence, Elections Ontario has the evidence, that Andrew Olivier was offered a bribe. The tapes show that both Pat Cerbera and Jerry Lougheed say on tape that they were doing that on behalf of this Premier. But the Premier is denying all of that, Speaker. She's denying all of it. So my question is very clear. Does she have any evidence at all about her version of the story, Speaker? What's her version? Question. Thank you. Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I've, told, I've, uh, I've talked about my, uh, my position many times in the House, and I just, I, again, I'm going to read into the record what the Chief Electoral Officer has said. The, these are the Chief Electoral Officer's words, Mr. Member Speaker, from the and it's the section order, of the Chief time. Electoral Officer's report that is germane to the issue of whether there has been guilt determined or not. And what he says is this, and I quote, I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges, unquote, Mr. Speaker. That's why the investigation is not taking place in this House, Mr. Speaker. The investigation is independent. It is unfolding, and we need to let it do so, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Supplementary. Speaker, there are mountains upon mountains of evidence that Andrew Olivier was offered a job in order for him to step aside. Order. And clear the way for the hand-picked Liberal candidate so that the Premier would not have to appoint him. There are two taped phone calls. There are police interviews that say that no decision had been made about whether or not to appoint Glenn Tebow. But the Premier claims that all of this evidence is wrong, Speaker. So I just want to know, the people of Ontario, I think, deserve to know, will she share her evidence with us? Thank you. Mr. Speaker, you know, again, I have said repeatedly in this House and outside of this House that uh, I had decided that, uh, that Glenn Tebow was going to be our candidate. I had made that decision. I've said that over and over and over again. And, Mr. Speaker, the, the uh, Minister of Agriculture and Food says it is a great choice, and it is a great choice. It was a great choice. Glenn Tebow is a terrific representative for Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. He's a strong, strong voice and advocate for Sudbury. And Mr. Speaker, you know, the issues that are confronting Sudbury and other parts of the North, Mr. Speaker, are very challenging ones, and we need to make sure that we are making very good decisions to make sure that there are good transportation yeah. networks, that there's good investment in infrastructure, and Mr. Sudbury Speaker, that people in Sudbury, like people all over the province, have the prospect of a secure retirement. Those are the issues that the member for Sudbury ran on, Mr. Speaker. That's why he's sitting in this House on this side of the House, Mr. Speaker. Final supplementary. Speaker, this is the sixth time this Premier has been asked for any evidence to support her story, and the Premier has yet 
to provide one shred, one iota of evidence to back up her story. The Premier's version of events speaker simply doesn't match any of the evidence that is currently on record. It doesn't match Jerry Lougheed's taped phone call. It doesn't match Pat Sorbera's taped phone call. And it doesn't match what Andrew, Andrew Olivier, Olivier told the police. So let's try again, Member from Beaches, in, in front of all of the evidence that's been put so far on the record. Does the Premier have any evidence to back up her version of events? Does she have any evidence to back up her story, Speaker? Thank you, Premier. Mr. Speaker, as I have said a number of times today, uh, Elections Ontario determined that the allegations against me and the member for Sudbury were baseless. We'll continue to work with the authorities, Mr. Speaker. I will continue to fully cooperate as we have been doing, Mr. Speaker. But the fact is, there are many, many issues that are confronting us. And as I said to the uh, to the member of the uh, Conservative Party, the leader of the third party could, in one of her questions, be asking a question about the roundtable on murdered and missing Aboriginal women that is taking place in Ottawa on Friday, Mr. Speaker. I would have thought that that would be an issue that would be of great concern to the leader of the third party, especially given that her candidate in Sudbury was a First Nations member, Mr. Speaker. I thought that maybe there would be at least one question about what kinds of actions we might expect to come out of that roundtable, Mr. Speaker. That's an important issue, not just in Ontario, but across the country. I fully expect Thank you. Thank you. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Thank you. New question. The Leader of Her Majesty's Loyal Opposition. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Premier, you have repeatedly said that on December 11th you had a conversation with Andrew Olivier and told him you were appointing Glenn Tebow as your candidate in Sudbury. Pat Sabera said she was in the room with you when you spoke on the phone to Mr. Olivier. Ms. Sabera explicitly said she could hear your side of the conversation. But the next day, Ms. Sabera told Mr. Olivier, quote, you've been directly asked by the Premier to make a decision to step aside. Premier, if you had already told Mr. Olivier that you were appointing Mr. Thibault, then why did Ms. Sabera continue to ask Mr. Olivier to step aside? A it's a done deal. Why the bribe? Uh, I'm going to ask the member to withdraw. Withdraw, Mr. Speaker. Premier. Mr. Speaker, I'll say what I have said repeatedly, uh, which is that uh, I had decided that Glenn Tebow was going to be the candidate in Sudbury. That, uh, that I have made that very, very clear, Mr. Speaker. There is an investigation going on. That investigation is not taking place in this chamber. The investigation is independent, Mr. Speaker. We need to let that investigation unfold, and I will continue to respond to the questions across the floor, Mr. Speaker. But the fact is that the investigation is independent, and it is taking place outside of this chamber. Thank you, supplementary. You've uh, dragged this chamber and all the members, I say to the Premier, Mr. Speaker, into this mess because you won't restore integrity to your office. And you're bringing us all down, and we don't appreciate it. So you can say it's independent. True, the police investigation is, and possible charges in that process. But you've got us all into this mess because you refuse to do the right thing. You're bringing the art of politics and the honour of politics down. That's why we're going to continue to ask you these questions. Premier, you said you told Mr. Olivier on December 11th you were appointing the candidate, and then on the 12th, Ms. Silvera said you were still asking Mr. Olivier to step down. Premier, who's telling the truth about their conversation with Mr. Olivier? The you see it, please? You see it, please? Thank you. Premier. Well, let me let me just uh, begin by saying, Mr. Speaker, that I have a I have a deep respect for political office. Uh, I'm I'm in I'm in politics because I believe that government can and must make a difference. I believe that elected officials have a responsibility have a responsibility to advance the causes that brought them into politics in the first place, Mr. Speaker. To do everything that they can to improve the lot of uh, of people in their jurisdictions, Mr. Speaker. 
border and across this province. I wouldn't be standing here. I wouldn't be in politics, and neither would uh, I believe neither would anyone in this house be here if they didn't believe that government could make a difference. For I'm going to ask the member from Leeds Grenville and the Minister of the Environment to um, have a conversation maybe elsewhere. Wrap up, please. I just want to say to the young people who are here for the model parliament, Mr. Speaker, that I am I'm so proud of them for taking part in this, and I just want them to know government can and must make a difference. It must make a positive difference. And it's you see it, please? You see it, please? Thank you. The Minister of Aboriginal Affairs will come to order. New question, the member from Timmins, James Bay. My question is to the Premier, and I certainly hope your example is not one that the model parliament is going to take away. Because that's not the way this place should operate. But let's get to the question. When Greg, Sabera name, when Greg Sabera's name appeared in an RCMP warrant, he resigned from Cabinet. But when Pat Sabera is facing down a criminal investigation, the Premier is keeping her on the job as one of her top aides. Why do different rules apply to Pat Sabera than apply to Greg Sabera? And when will you ask Pat Sabera to step aside? Thank you. Well, Mr. Speaker, and I, uh, again, I made a statement on Friday, and I was very clear on my position on this. And the the situation that the uh, member opposite is referencing is a very different situation than the one we're dealing with uh, here, Mr. Speaker. So let me just repeat: the investigation is not taking place in this house. The investigation is separate, Mr. Speaker. I will continue to answer questions. I will continue to work with the authorities, as we all will. But at the same time, Mr. Speaker, there is such such important work to be done, and I referenced the, uh, the roundtable on Friday on missing and murdered Aboriginal women. It is extremely important that provinces come together, that leadership across this country come together and attempt to work with the federal government. Whether we can uh, work with the federal government to get a national inquiry, Mr. Speaker, or uh, in, if that's not possible, to at least come together to yes, agree on what some of the concrete actions might be to improve the lot of Aboriginal girls and women in this province. Mr. Speaker, that's a very Thank important you. piece of work that I will be doing while the investigation. Thank you. Supplementary. Again to the Premier. Premier, I've been here for 25 years, and in 25 years, we have seen members of cabinet from different governments. Um, I find the decorum unacceptable when someone is trying to put a question and to mock somebody is not what I call appropriate. Or anyone else trying to tell me how to do my job. Please. In the last 25 years, members of every party have faced investigations for one thing or another. Some have been exonerated, some have not. But there's been a tradition that when you're under investigation, you do the right thing and you step aside so you're not acting as a government decision maker. Why do these rules not apply to Pat Sabera? Well, Mr. Speaker, and the, I think the, uh, the member opposite uh, actually answered part of the question uh, himself in the sense that uh, Pat Cervera is not a sitting member of Parliament, Mr. Speaker. I mean, he, uh, he knows that full well. Um, he also knows, he also knows, because I know the member fairly well, he knows that I take this seriously. He knows that I'm going to work with the authorities. He knows very well, Mr. Speaker, that the investigation is separate from what goes on in this chamber. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, there are many, many important issues that we need to be talking about. This is, this is one that obviously is, uh, is important and we'll continue to discuss it, but the investigation is not taking place in this House. It's taking place independently outside of the Legislature. Thank you. No question, the member from Beaches, East York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My speaker, my question is for the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. As all members of the House know, Mr. Speaker, it is quite common for us to hear from constituents about drug funding in Ontario. We are often asked why some drugs are funded by the government and some are not. 
The question for many is a question that affects their very livelihoods every day. Ontarians need access to certain drugs so they can do the normal things that we take for granted, like go to work, take walks, visit new places in the province. So it's important that our government get drug funding right so that constituents like mine in the great riding of Beaches East York can live the best lives possible, and I know our government is committed to ensuring Ontarians have access to the best and safest treatments available. So, Speaker, I ask the Minister if he would please explain the process of drug funding in Ontario. Thank you. Minister of Health, Long-Term Care. Well, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Thank you uh, to the, the member from Beaches East York as well for the question. Uh, our government, Mr. Speaker, is committed to ensuring that Ontarians have access to the best and the safest drugs and treatments. Yes. And that's why we took the politics out of funding, those funding decisions, Mr. Speaker. We did that several years ago, and now we rely on experts to determine which drugs are and should be funded. All drugs go through a review by an expert committee, yeah. which undertakes a thorough evaluation based on the best available evidence. In fact, in 2010, we introduced a process which now allows patient advocacy groups to make submissions which are considered by the committee in evaluating a new drug therapy. Based on the committee's advice, the executive officer of the Ontario Public Drug Program makes a funding decision based on the best interests of patients Answer. and the public. This year, our government will spend nearly $5 billion on more than 3,800 drugs for Ontario patients, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Minister, for that uh, review. Now, I was approached by Beach East York constituents Lorna Killam and Michael Byrne about a drug called Solaris that provides demonstrated improvements to health and quality of life for patients with atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome, or AHUS. AHUS is a very rare and life-threatening disease, and their very close friend, Tony Vernon, who's in the house today, has AHUS and needs a life-saving kidney. My constituent, Lorna, is a match and will donate her kidney, but her doctor asks that Tony be on Solaris before he'll do the operation. But unfortunately, this medication is not currently available to the majority of AHUS patients in Ontario who depend on the government to fund this costly treatment. In June 2013, Health Canada approved Solaris Question. for use in Canada, but it's not listed. So, Minister, what is Ontario doing for Can Ontarians who suffer from Thank AHUS you. to have access to Solaris? Thank you. Minister. And Mr. Speaker, as I was able to say earlier this morning in question period, I was informed earlier this week by the Executive Officer of Ontario's Public Drug Program that Ontario will now provide Solaris to patients with atypical hemolytic uremic syndrome, or AHUS, who meet defined clinical criteria of the disease. The AHUS advocacy group was informed of this decision yesterday, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, yesterday, yesterday we had one member of the PC party questioning whether we should even be teaching evolution in, in schools, Mr. Speaker. And now a member of the PC party is suggesting our decisions on drug funding need not be based on science. Mr. Speaker, I can't even begin to imagine what may be coming next. Perhaps we never landed on the moon. Perhaps the Earth world is flat. is flat after all. But, Mr. Speaker, we will continue Answer. to rely on evidence to make decisions about what drugs work and for what patients, and I'm happy to make this announcement today. Thank you. Your question? A member from Bruce Gray, Owen South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. The day after you spoke with Mr. Olivier, yeah, the Deputy Chief himself. of Staff called him and warned him over the phone that this wasn't about Olivier deciding to run. It was all about Andrew over Olivier here. deciding to say no to the Premier. Of course, Sir Barrett is referring to him saying no to your request that he step aside. Ms. Cerbera made it clear on that tape that you, Premier, asked Olivier to step aside. Premier, why do you continue to deny that you asked Mr. Olivier to step aside on December 11th? Mr. Speaker, once again, let me uh, let me just say that uh, I had made a decision that Glenn Tebow was going to be our candidate in Sudbury. There is a there is a uh, an investigation ongoing, Mr. Speaker. That investigation is not taking place in this house. It is uh, it's an independent investigation, and it's uh, it's uh, taking place. And I will continue. We will all continue to uh, to cooperate with it, Mr. Speaker. But I thought actually I thought with the Conference Board of Canada report coming out the last couple of days that the uh, that the uh, members opposite, particularly in the PC party, might have been interested in talking about the economy. And um, what's interesting is that all private sector economists are now forecasting continued growth for the, uh, for the Ontario economy. That's very, very good news, Mr. Speaker. And I know the Minister of Finance is going to want to.
I was going to want to comment further on this. The Conference Board of Canada's Provincial Outlook Winter 2015 says, and I quote, Ontario's economy is projected to grow by 2.9 per cent this year, bolstered by strong exports and Thank consumer you. spending. That's unquote. News. That's very good news, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Again, the Premier. The day after Mr. Olivier spoke to you, he spoke with your Deputy Chief of Staff and told her, and I quote, I am looking to seek that nomination. Yet you told us over and over again there was Deputy going to be House no Speaker, nomination. He said, and I appreciate, I appreciate the Premier's position. It simply doesn't make sense that Mr. Olivier appreciated your position and then told your Deputy Chief of Staff he was still running if you said there wasn't going to be a nomination. So, Premier, are you telling the truth when you say you told Mr. Olivier you were appointing a candidate on December 11th? Premier. Mr. Fargus. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Court of Public Opinion ruled, Mr. Speaker, and they chose Glenn Tebow and Sudbury. And they chose Glenn Tebow because they recognize that we do have challenges before us and that we must continue to invest in skills and in training, to continue to invest in infrastructure, invest and maintain a very dynamic and competitive business climate, and strengthen our retirement security, Mr. Speaker. They know that we have a lot of work to bring our, our path to balance, which is achieving its results ahead of targets. They know that they continue to look at our program reviews, that the President of the Treasury Board is doing a fine job looking at managing our compensation as well, Mr. Speaker revenue integrity to ensure that everyone pays their fair share all along exceeding our targets becoming the lowest cost government anywhere in canada and recognizing that yes, we sir. must stay together and the people of sudbury ruled on the issue that's before us in this house recognizing all that was put forward and they chose Thank a you. great candidate ben Tebow. Thank you. new question the member from Bramley gormalton Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Pat Sobira and Jerry Lahid both have very similar stories. They both were caught on tape saying that they would like Andrea Olivier to step aside for Glenn Tebow. In, in the course of that de 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 deliberation, they would like to present Olivier with, and I quote Lahid, options in terms of appointments, jobs, or whatever. This is the 26th time the Premier is being asked this question. Who gave Pat Sobera and Jerry Lougheed the directions to present these options to Andrew Olivier? Thank you, Premier. Mr. Speaker, again, uh, I will say once again that uh, I have uh, I have answered these questions, Mr. Speaker. The and the investigation is happening outside of this uh, outside of this house, Mr. Speaker. I've been very clear that I take this matter very seriously. I will continue to work with the authorities. But I thought actually when the uh, the member opposite stood up that he was going to be asking a question on auto insurance, Mr. Speaker, because because we're making progress on auto insurance. I know that the Minister of Finance is going to want to speak to that because. I know it's of great concern to the member opposite, and it's just one of the issues that we have to be dealing with as we uh, as we govern this province, Mr. Speaker. And I think it's important that we give regular updates on things like the progress on the reduction on uh, auto insurance premiums. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The question again is to the Premier. The question is really very simple, and instead of answering the question directly, the Premier has repeatedly not answer the question, deflected and refer to a scripted answer. The people of Ontario don't want scripted answers. They don't want speaking notes. They don't want talking points. They want a direct answer. So I'm going to ask the question one more time, and this is the 26th time, and I'm hoping the Premier can answer this question directly for once. Simple question. Who gave the orders to Pat Sabira and Jerry Lougheed? Mr. Speaker, uh, the member opposite I believe, took a law course. I think he's actually a lawyer. Oh. Recognizing that, he more than anyone recognizes the process, and we are respecting the process, and that's exactly what the Premier is doing. But in regards to auto insurance, which I, I think he had a passion for, we know that we continue to do what's necessary to reduce auto rates. That's why we have a bill before the House. That's why we're f fighting fraud. And now, Mr. Speaker, for, the, for, the, for those that are watching, we have now over a dozen uh, companies reducing their rates by more than 15 percent. We are on target to do what's necessary because of the actions that we're taking, and we want to do more. And I hope the member opposite will try to participate in that process as well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Question, the member from Halton. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Minister of Education. Minister, as you know, today is Pink Shirt Day. 
Pink Shirt Day began in Nova Scotia after a grade nine boy wore a pink shirt to school. He was mercilessly bullied by schoolmates for looking gay. Two-thirds of kids who identify as gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgendered feel unsafe at school, and almost three-quarters of kids report hearing homosexual slurs at schools every day. Minister, bullying in our schools and in our society is a widespread problem and is unacceptable, often resulting in devastating emotional, psychological, or physical harm on those who are targeted. I know this is an issue that all members in this House feel strongly about. Minister, can you please tell me and tell this House what the government is doing to combat this deep-rooted and Question. appalling problem? Thank you. Minister of Education. Thank you, Speaker, and happy birthday to the member from Halton. <laughs> and, Speaker, I'm absolutely thrilled to be able to speak about this issue because it's very important to me. And the member is right. Two high school students, David Shepard and Travis Price, they didn't stand by while that grade nine student was bullied for wearing pink. They went out and bought pink shirts too and took a brave stand against bullying. I'm proud to be a member of this legislature which passed aggressive anti-bullying legislation. And I'm also proud that our government recently introduced the revised health and physical education curriculum that brings forward current and relevant issues about bullying. This includes teaching our students about Answer. healthy, respectful relationships with their peers and, bully and that bullying under any circumstance is not okay. Thank Speaker, you. I'm proud that we're all wearing pink today. Thank you. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, I thank the Minister of Education for her response and for her thoughtful uh, comments. Those two grade 12 boys went home that night and emailed their friends and word spread. The next day, the entire school was outfitted in a sea of pink. Nice. Yes, these young men changed the culture at their school in order to combat bullying in schools across this province. We need to change the culture in all of our schools. There have been too many tragic incidents of young people taking their own lives in part because they could no longer endure the bullying from their peers at school. Mr. Speaker, I know that the Minister of Education agrees that this is completely unacceptable. We also know that in today's technologically driven world, bullying does not stop at the end of the day. Minister, could you please inform this House on what Question. your government is doing to combat bullying outside of the classroom? Thank you. Minister. Thank you. Uh, and the member is absolutely correct, Speaker. As a government, we have taken action. Ontario took the lead and included cyberbullying as part of the definition of bullying and recognized cyberbullying in our Accepting Schools Act. Our digital and interconnected world offers students endless positive possibilities, but at the same time, they need to be aware of the potential risks, which is why I am so proud that the recently revised health and physical education curriculum helps children and youth develop skills for online safety by learning about such things as safe and respectful use of technology, social, emotional, and legal implications of online behaviors such as sexting, and potential effects of sexting on relationships and future employment. Yes, sir. Our government has taken action. We've provided bullying prevention training for up to 25,000 teachers and close to 7,500 principals and Thank vice you. principals. We are Thank you. New question the member from Sormont and Gary. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. In recent months, you questioned the integrity of the Auditor General and downplayed the OPP statements on their ITO. You made allegations against your colleagues across the aisle. Everyone's uh, integrity seems to be fair game to you. But, Premier, when somebody questions your integrity, your deputy stands in the chamber insulting the intelligence of the people of Ontario and painting a flowery picture of your decisions that the public no longer believes. Premier, when will you demonstrate the integrity of your office and call for the resignation of Jerry Lougheed and Pat Sabrak? 
Well, Mr. Speaker, once again, I have, uh, I have said repeatedly that uh, there's an investigation ongoing. Uh, we, will con we will continue to uh, work with the authorities, but we need to let that investigation take place outside this House, Mr. Speaker. It's an independent process, and uh, you know, I've, I've been very clear. I've answered these questions many, many times. I made a statement on Friday that is a, a public statement, Mr. Speaker, but the investigation needs to unfold. But you know, Mr. Speaker, on the theme of there are many, many things that are confronting us right now and, uh, and uh, opportunities. I had the opportunity last Friday morning to attend the Athletes' Village uh, for the Pan Para Pan American Games that are taking place this summer, Mr. Speaker. It was a wonderful event. It was wonderful because it's an athlete's village and it's going to be terrific for the 10,000 athletes and coaches uh, who will be there in, uh, for the Pan Para Pan Games. But there's also a legacy attached to it, Mr. Speaker, and I know that the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport is going to want to speak Thank to you. that. It's a very important legacy. Thank you, Speaker. Again to the Premier. Your actions don't demonstrate the integrity your, your colleagues gush about. You continue to stand with your two Liberal operatives who have cast a dark shadow over the Sudbury election and our democracy. We shouldn't have to remind you to do the right thing, but you seem to have lost your way once again. We launched a petition that thousands of Ontarians have already signed, and Premier, they're asking that you do the right thing by demanding the resignation of Pat Sabrera and Jerry Lougheed Jr until the allegations are resolved. Premier, we stand up and finally come clean with the people of Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to acknowledge the, uh, the member's question. As the member uh, knows, the Premier has answered the question many times. Sure. But it gives me a great opportunity, I think, at this point, to talk about the Pan Am Para Pan Am Games. Oh, and I just want to give members an update because, you know, we're five months away and uh, I haven't had a question in quite some time. Order, please. Thank you. Carry on. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we've been able to sell over 275,000 tickets oh. so far. As the Premier mentioned, the Athletes' Village is complete. It was officially handed over to uh, TO 2015 from the contractors sure, and, uh, and Infrastructure tickets. Ontario. Yes, we have over 52,000 people who have signed up to volunteer. And Mr. Speaker, this is about building a legacy here in the province of Ontario Thank for you. future generations of athletes and young people. Thank you. New question. The member from Oshawa. Thank you, Speaker. And my question is to the Premier. Last month, your Deputy Chief of Staff, Pat Sorvera, called Andrew Olivier, asking him to stop seeking the Liberal nomination, and in exchange, he was offered a job. Ms. Sorvera said, and I quote, oh no, this is a good one, you're like the third person I've even heard her ask this of. So, Speaker, who are the other people Ms. Sorvera was referring to? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, as I have said repeatedly, um, we, will, we will work with the authorities. I will continue to work with the authorities. There's an investigation going on, Mr. Speaker. But that investigation is not taking place in this House. That investigation is taking place elsewhere. Uh, I made a decision that uh, Glenn Tebow was going to be the candidate in Sudbury. He is a strong and uh, will be a strong representative for Sudbury in his time here, Mr. Speaker. And we're very, very very uh, pleased that he's with us. But, Mr. Speaker, the fact is there is an investigation going on. I take it very seriously, but it's happening outside of this House. Mr. Speaker, there are many things that we have to be doing at the same time that investigation is taking place outside of this House. And one of those is investing in the infrastructure that we know is needed in places like Oshawa, Mr. Speaker. It's incredibly important for the Greater Toronto Hamilton area that we make those, investiga in those in investments in infrastructure including transit, Mr. Speaker, and that's exactly the work that's in um, Speaker, this is the third time that we've asked this question, but maybe the third time is the charm, um, and it seems that the Premier doesn't feel the need to answer, but I'm going to try anyway. Pat Sorbera told Andrew Olivier that the Premier has called two other people to push them out of the way. If you won't tell us who they are, then I'll ask instead, what were they offered in order to get out of the way? 
Minister of Transportation. Thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. I thank the member for that particular question. As the Premier has said repeatedly in this place and elsewhere, that is an investigation. Those are, those are discussions that are happening elsewhere. But, Speaker, you know, over the last few days, I had the privilege to meet with a number of representatives at the OGRA Roma Conference, including people from stop, stop. I'm, uh, please. I'm going to make a comment here, not exactly a ruling, but I'm going to make a comment that the tradition of this place is that the question put deserves attention by the answer. Be seated, please. I'm, uh, I'm requesting that the, uh, the answers come somewhat uh, close to the question. Thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. And I, and I know that the Premier has had the opportunity many times over the last number of days as the opposition has been exclusively focused on one particular issue. Unfortunately, Speaker, to the neglect of everything else that's important to this community. And certainly that member, the member, member representing the a Durham and region time. community should be very happy to know that we continue to proceed with the 407 East Extension, for example. That we continue to invest in Go Transit to her community along the Lakeshore East Line, Speaker, with more to come over the next decade, Speaker. I can tell that member that the chair of her region met with me the other day at Roma OGRA. He's very happy with the work we're doing. I need to correct my record. Third time. It means you're close. New question. The member from Cambridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Research and Innovation. Investing in research excellence helps support economically important sectors and leads to important discoveries that bring tangible benefits to the people in my riding of Cambridge and all Ontarians. Thanks in part to strategic investments made by our government, Ontario has emerged as a key global destination for neuroscience research. Our province has some of the best educated, hardest working, and most innovative brain researchers and scientists in the world. I understand that with our government's continued support, the Ontario Brain Institute is a seamlessly connecting uh, association for researchers, clinicians, and industry to make critical discoveries and deliver innovative pa patient-focused treatment. I welcome this as I've provided nursing care to many of those that are suffering from brain-related issues. Minister, Question. can you inform the members of this House on how our government is building Ontario up as a global leader in brain research, commercialization, and care? Minister of Innovation and Research. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the member from Cambridge for that very good question. Mr. Speaker, the economic impacts of brain and the mental health disorders to our economy is $39 billion a year. And that's why investing in patients focused healthcare innovation is a critical pillar of our, our government's economic growth plan. Our government, Mr. Speaker, created Ontario Brain Institute in the year of 2005, and this Premier, after becoming Premier of Ontario in 2013, allocated $100 million to Ontario Brain Institute. This funding will help Ontario Brain Institute to raise $205 million additional from additional investments from other sources. Mr. Speaker, Ontario Brain Institute is providing strategic brain research and helping raise Ontario's profile in the world as the leader in brain yes, sciences. Sir. Our government will continue, Mr. Speaker, to support leading-edge brain research that will help grow our economy as well as create high-skilled jobs and improve patient care in our province of Ontario. Thank you. thank you, Speaker, and thank you, Minister, for the answer. I understand that more than two million Ontarians will be affected by brain disorders in their lifetime and that one million Ontarians currently live with depression. As a nurse, I provided care to many constituents in my riding and their families suffering from conditions such as Alzheimer's, autism, depression and Parkinson's. While it's reassuring to know that Ontario has some of the best brain scientists in the world, our government must continue to support dynamic research to improve the treatment of these brain-related disorders. I understand that you recently announced the latest research projects the Ontario Brain Institute is undertaking, thanks in part to our government's investments. 
Minister, can you inform the members of the House on how these Question. projects will help improve the lives of Ontarians and my constituents in Cambridge who are battling these conditions? Thank you, Minister. Mr. Speaker, I want again to thank the member for that very good question. Mr. Speaker, my ministry is committed to supporting groundbreaking research to help improve treatments of brain disorders and diseases. Last month, I was joined by my colleague, Minister Sergio, announcing $56 million investments and funding to Ontario Brain Institute. This funding will support groundbreaking uh, research to help improve treatments and diagnosis of brain diseases, diseases and the disorders such as depression, Alzheimer's, autism and Parkinson's, and help get to get treatments to patients much faster. Mr. Speaker, our government will continue to build Ontario's reputation as the world's leader in brain-related research and science and innovation. Thank you. Thank you. No question, the member from Nipissing. Thank you, uh, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Premier, I can't help but notice the similarities between your gas plant scandal and your Sudbury scandal. Yep. They both centre on uh, closely placed insiders, uh, and uh, they uh, both uh, have uh, deputy chiefs of staff involved to do the Liberal bidding. You shut down the gas plant scandal committee to protect your insiders in that OPP investigation, and you won't make the insiders in the Sudbury scandal step aside while the OPP investigation carries on. So you've developed a culture of entitlement for insiders and a culture of fear for anyone who opposes you. Premier, why are you protecting the people who are suspects in a criminal investigation unless the trail leads right back to you? Mr. Premier. Speaker, let's just, let me just uh, respond to the, uh, the first part of that question, which is to say, Mr. Speaker, that when I came into this office in uh, 2013, I made it clear, and actually I had made it clear through my leadership bid, Mr. Speaker, that we were going to open up the process, that we were going to open up the process uh, that the Justice Committee was involved in, that the, uh, the scope of the questions that the uh, Justice Committee would have access to would be broadened. That happened, Mr. Speaker. There were hundreds of thousands of documents and dozens of witnesses that went in front of, uh, of that committee, Mr. Speaker, and I'm, I'm pleased that there has been a report that has been written. And so, Mr. Speaker, uh, as, I, as I did there uh, with the, uh, the situation around the Sudbury by-election, Mr. Speaker, I've been very clear. I've been clear in this House. I've been clear outside of this House, Mr. Speaker, exactly what I, uh, exactly what I did. I made a decision that Glenn Tebow was going to be our candidate, Mr. Speaker, and uh, there is now an Answer. investigation going on. That investigation is going on outside of this house it is an independent investigation and i believe we need to let it unfold thank you uh, premier in your uh, scandals we learned that the liberals continue to say one thing but later evidence reveals the truth in the gas plant we heard under oath i have no emails but the opp recovered those emails in sudbury we heard quote no job offer was made but the opp turned over tape conversations outlying a job offer premier there's hard evidence audio tape recordings that the decision on your candidate in sudbury had not been made by mid december now this is contradictory to what we've heard in this legislature now, we both know that knowingly contradicting the truth shows contempt for every member of this legislature. Premier, can you and will you provide this House and the OPP with even one email that corroborates your version of the story? Mr. Speaker, again. When I say that the investigation is independent, I, I, I'm not, that's not my opinion. That's a fact, Mr. Speaker. The, um, the Public Prosecution Service of Canada has been retained, Mr. Speaker. It's a process that's happening outside of this House. Now, I understand, as well as the next person, the back and forth of uh, question period, Mr. Speaker, but I believe that accusing people of being criminals when there's an investigation going on is wrong. I don't think that, that, is, I don't think that that's right. I don't think that it's Fair, and I think that the uh, the honourable members opposite should stop doing that, Mr. Speaker. And I think that they should acknowledge that the investigation is happening outside this house, and that we need to let it unfold, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Premier. If the Premier has any evidence to support her version of the Sudbury Bribery scandal, why won't she share it? 
Hunter. Premier. <laughs> Premier. Mr. Speaker, sorry, Mr. Speaker, um, again, uh, the investigation is not taking place in this house. It's, it's not happening here. It's happening outside of this house. It's an independent investigation. And it's really important that it be independent, Mr. Speaker. I don't think there's anyone in Ontario who would want to believe that the politicians in this house would be directing that investigation. I think that they, they believe that the authorities need to be allowed to do their work. So that's what I'm going to do, Mr. Speaker. I'm going to cooperate with the authorities, but I'm going to let them do their work outside of this house. Thank you. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, is a reason that the Premier won't share any evidence to support her version of the Sudbury bribery scandal because there is none. Premier. Again, I have, I have stated clearly my position. I've stated it here. I stated it on Friday in a very public statement that is available to anyone who wants to read it, Mr. Speaker. I've said it over and over and over again. Mr. Speaker, there is an investigation going on. The authorities have a responsibility to, uh, to uh, undertake that investigation independent of this legislature. We're going to let them do that, Mr. Speaker, and I will continue to cooperate with them. Thank you. New question. Remember from Ottawa, Orleans. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Attorney General. I know that you and your staff have announced a new strategy for the province last December. This strategy seems to be designed to allow a larger access for all Ontarians to the legal system. This is something that's very significant for the residents of Ottawa Orleans and for me. I've also noticed that many people involved in the legal community approve of this approach. Mr. Speaker, can the Attorney General clarify how this strategy will move the legal system of Ontario forward? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. First of all, I'd like to thank the member from Ottawa Orléans for her interest in the legal system. She is correct. Our strategy is increasing access to our legal system. The improvement of access to justice has always been a priority for my ministry. I take this very seriously and my ministry is engaged to provide a cheaper and more simple system for all the residents of Ontario. This is one of the components of my mandate letter. I will have a round table with the key partners of the legal system as well as with the community to discuss challenges that they are facing. We will work together in order to overcome these obstacles and we will be a force for positive change along with our partners. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I thank the Attorney General for her response. It's important for the residents of Ontario that this remains a priority for our government. The legal community was very excited when this strategy was announced. Mr. Speaker, I believe that this would be interesting. It would be interesting for my, the members of my riding if the Attorney General could elaborate on certain points of this strategy in order to us illustrate how this will ensure an appropriate access to legal services. Thank you again to the member from Ottawa Orléans for her question. We will ensure that legal, legal services are faster and that the legal system is simpler to navigate. We will also allow participants in family justice to have easier access to mediation and other means of resolving problems. And we will ensure that they have easier access to support services as well as information. We will ensure that there is a more efficient support for those with mental health problems this will include the steps involving um, bail. We must not forget that something that the, the pilot project of Ottawa for access to legal services in French will improve access to legal services in their language. 
Excuse me, point of order. I, I, I've got to acknowledge it. The point of order from the member from Stormont, Dundas, and South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. According to Standing Order 37E, a minister whom, whom an oral question is directed may refer the question to another minister who is responsible for the subject matter to which the question relates. relates. My question to the Premier related to the ongoing investigation into the Sudbury by-election and no way reference the Ministry of Tourism. Uh, I've got enough of the gist of your point of order. I've dealt with that, as you heard me in the House deal with that, and uh, subsequent to that, I would remind all people asking the questions, and in particular, the ministers answering the questions, even when you refer the question to someone else, it should be answering the question. There are, this is a reminder for all members, as a result of this morning's uh, failed unanimous consent, that we've all agreed that we would meet on the grand staircase for a photo for those that can make the time to do so for Pink Shirt Day. There are no deferred votes. This House stands recessed until 3 p.m. this afternoon.